from giant shipwrecks to mysterious disappearances. This is the best of Strangest Abandoned Ships. Number 10, the SS United States, Philadelphia. Built in 1952, this ocean liner came at the steep cost of $79.4 million. It is the fastest ocean liner to cross the Atlantic in either direction. Unfortunately, the company that built the SS United States never managed to make the ship profitable. Neither did the string of owners after them. This beauty of the ocean saw its last voyage in 1969. Since then, it has been dragged to a few docks, eventually settling for Pier 82 in Philadelphia. It has remained there since 1996. I know this one has been requested from viewers for a while. It took me some time to get to it, but we're finally exploring it. If you have any other great suggestions, don't forget to comment below. In 2016, the SS United States came very close to being purchased and renovated as a New York cruise ship. Crystal Cruises, the company that made the bid, realized that the expenses for such a restoration project would be too high. But in a surprising turn of events, the company donated $350,000 towards the preservation of the SS United States. Chances are, this massive cruise liner will never travel again, but maybe it will become a badass museum. Number 9. The Corpac Wreck, Scotland This beauty has definitely become part of the scenery at Lake Lynn, or Loch Lynn, if you are being dogmatic. The ship began its journey in 1975 under the name MV Dayspring. It was built as a fishing vessel and it got the job done for decades. In 2001, under new ownership, the ship was now renamed to the Golden Harvest. Not long after, the fishing vessel was all but abandoned at a pier. When the chain holding the ship failed during a heavy storm, the ship found its way to the shores of Loch Lynn. Since 2011, the Golden Harvest has been slowly deteriorating. I assume the relatively calm lake is the only reason why this ship is still intact. It's not grandiose, it's not tragic, it's not mysterious but it is a beautiful little abandoned ship. Number 8. Lubov Orlova Lubov Orlova was named after the famous Russian actress by the same name. Built in 1976 by the USSR, she served as an expedition cruise ship, traveling around the Arctic and Antarctica often. In 2010, Lubov Orlova was seized at St. John's Port, Newfoundland because of accrued debts amounting to $251,000. It stayed at that port for the next two years, and when it was being towed to the Dominican Republic to be scrapped, something happened. Not even one day into the journey, the tow lines broke and the ship drifted away. Incredibly, she was captured again by a Transport Canada tugboat and dragged away to international waters, where she was cut loose again. The last time Lubov Orlova was spotted was in 2013 near the coast of Iceland and Ireland. Apart from that, nobody really knows where this ship went. Number 7. The MVE Evangelica This is one of the few ships on our list that was actually involved in the Second World War but that had nothing to do with its ultimate fate. The MVE Evangelica had many names. It took its maiden voyage as the Empire Strength, and it was designated as a refrigerated cargo ship. The main route of the ship was England to Australia, and eventually it traveled to Argentina as well. Right now, you can still see the remains of the Evangelica if you're willing to travel to the Black Sea. It's in very good condition, considering the ship ran aground in 1968. Sooner or later, the sea will claim it as its own, but until then, enjoy the rusted metal, I guess. Number 6. The SS Palo Alto Built in Oakland, California, the SS Palo Alto was a concrete ship. Wait, 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 <laughs> what? Yeah, you heard that right, concrete ship. It turns out, it was a lot cheaper to find the materials, but the labor and operating costs were higher than usual. So, fair trade-off, I guess? Anyway, the ship was completed in 1919, too late to see any action in the war. In 1929, a company decided to turn it into an amusement park. A pier was built to reach the ship, but not even two years later, the company went bankrupt. 
Nothing of note has happened since then. The ship can still be found at the Sea Cliff Beach. And oh yeah, apparently in 2005, it was found out that the concrete ship was leaking fuel. Why it still had fuel in its tanks almost 100 years later is a mystery for another time. Number 5. Temple Hall Finding information on this shipwreck was harder than I thought. Built in 1954, the Temple Hall changed many owners during its years of operation. On a voyage from San Pedro to Thessaloniki, the ship was stuck between a rock and a hard wave, so to say. Bad weather, heavy seas, and no luck to be found, the Temple Hall, now known as the Telamon, ran aground near the Canary Island, Lanzarote. It didn't help that the maintenance record for the ship was abysmal. You can still find it at the exact same spot, some 40 years after it wrecked. Number 4. Edro 3, Cyprus the Edro 3 is another Norwegian cargo ship that had an unfortunate history. The ship ran aground near Pegea, Cyprus. As always, rough seas and bad weather were blamed for the wreck. There was no salvage operations attempted, but the ship was emptied of all cargo, fuel and oil, and everything that will negatively impact the local environment, except for the ship itself, because I guess that doesn't matter. Articles state that it is now forbidden to visit the ship because it's deemed too dangerous, which means at some point people were allowed to explore it, which must have been a pretty cool experience. As if one shipwreck wasn't enough, you can also find the remains of the MV Demetrius II nearby. That one seems to not have fared as well as Edro 3. Number 3. MV Kalakala the motor vessel Kalakala was originally named the Peralta, and it served the San Francisco Bay Area. It was quickly sold to a Seattle businessman and became a staple of Seattle. From postcards to songs, this ship was the bee's knees. She served over a million visitors a year, and everybody had nice things to say about their experience on the ship. But all good things must come to an end. The Kalakala silently fell into obscurity and became a fishing vessel off the coast of Alaska. In a sweet turn of events, an arts and history group purchased the vessel and brought it back to the Pacific Northwest. It was to be returned to its former glory at a shipping yard in Tacoma, Washington. It did not work out. By 2011, the Coast Guard wanted the ships crapped because it was a danger to nearby shipping routes. During the scrapping process, an auction was held for bits and pieces of this strange and beautiful ship. Within hours, the Kalakala was inducted into the Things That Will Live Forever Hall of Fame, figuratively speaking. Bits and pieces of the vessel are scattered all around the world, some in museums, some in private collections, abandoned but not forgotten. Number 2. MV Cigna, Australia In 1974, the MV Cigna, a Norwegian boat carrier, was caught in the middle of a major storm near the coast of New South Wales, Australia. Stockton Beach, to be more exact. To make things worse, the MV Cigna was on its maiden voyage, meaning it was the first journey of the ship. The MV Cigna was four miles off the coast, waiting to load up with 50,000 tons of coal. Wind gusts reached 100 miles per hour, and the captain decided to set sail. Unfortunately, the orders came way too late. The Cigna was unable to escape the storm, and it ran aground. Abandoned ship orders were given because of the beating the ship was receiving, and the rescue was no walk in the park. But all 31 sailors made it out alive. During the first salvage operation, the ship broke in two. The second operation didn't go as planned either. Only the bow section of the ship was salvaged. The rest has become an iconic part of Stockton Beach. Here's a little progression of the ship over the years. This is after 10 years, 30 years. The RMS Queen Elizabeth, Hong Kong. What does RMS stand for? Royal Mail Ship just like the Titanic, but with much less tragedy. The ship was launched in 1938 and enjoyed an illustrious career. But by the 60s, there was absolutely no need for a passenger liner this big. A few years and owners later, the RMS Queen Elizabeth ended up in the Hong Kong Harbor. She was purchased by a Chinese shipping magnate. He planned to turn this ship into a floating university cruise and renamed the ship Seawise University. During the ship's restoration, a suspicious fire broke out. The ship capsized and stayed in this condition for over a year. 
Eventually, most of the ship was scrapped because it was deemed a hazard to nearby travel. Some of the remains of the Queen Elizabeth are still buried in the sediment at the Hong Kong Harbor. Would I dive there to see what I could find? Probably not the best idea. Check out the featured comment below, subscribe for more World on Earth, and I'll see you in the next video.